Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Rich Reviews. My name's Richard and today we're going to talk to you about the history behind me purchasing the 458. What led me to buy the 458? What made me decide on the 458 Spider? So what led me to decide on a 458? Well, that's an interesting one. It wasn't my first choice. My first choice was, as I had alluded to in some of the other videos, was actually a 355, a Ferrari 355. I always loved the 355 and particularly the GTS. Now first of all, it had to be a drop head. It had to be uh, a Ferrari where you can remove the roof. And I'd seen loads of 355s and love the car. I still think to this day, although my son doesn't agree with me, I still think it's the best looking classic Ferrari shape that exists, bar none. It's just the perfect size, the perfect shape. And the 355 was developed around the same time, was, was released around the same time as the 993S. And as you know, my previous car was a 993S, so they were in direct competition with each other. But the 355 was the heart and soul of the era. Um, the 993 was the engineering, was the mechanic, was the mechanical um, tour de force of the period, whereas the Ferrari was the heart and soul. You know, you loved the 355 with your heart and with your soul, um, uh, but with regards to your, your head and, and uh, your wallet, <laughs> you, uh, you, you would buy a 993. So I bought the 993, but I always hankered after the 355. Went and saw loads of 355s at loads of different shows. So I remember one in particular, went to Supercar Sunday at Brooklands, at the Brooklands old racetrack, and spoke to loads of 355 owners. And you know, there's always the same discussion that I would have with them that love the car, love the shape of the car, love the sound of the car. What about the maintenance costs? It was always came down to the maintenance costs with a 355. The biggest annoying thing with a 355 was that Ferrari in there decision process, whatever that decision process was, made this flipping decision that you had to take the 355 engines out for a full service to do, obviously, the cam belt changes. They didn't put chains in. Now, why they didn't put chains in, I, I, I've got no idea, but they decided for some reason that they'd use cam belts, and therefore cam belts had to be changed at a maximum five years, every five years, but around the three to five years, depending on where, but you know, you could have a 355 in your garage, it could never turn a wheel for three years, and you still have to change the, or three to five years, and you still have to change the flipping cam belt, so you'd, you'd be into uh, an extortionate bill to have the engine taken out to change the cam belt. So of course, while you've got the cam, while you've got the engine out, and then you're into other things like, you know, do the valve guides need replacing? Have the headers got overheated? Have they got warped? Is, are they, have they got split? Do they need replacing? Etc. 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 The water pump, yada yada yada, and then obviously the, the pulleys for the cam belts they need replacing potentially. Uh, the bearings, while you're there, you might as well change it. So, you know, a cam belt change, realistically, with a non-Ferrari garage, would cost you around three to five thousand pounds. Ferrari garage, you could easily double that to ten to ten to fifteen. That's just for the cam belts. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but that's circa around right. Then if you're changing the water pump, obviously Ferrari parts, so you're into a high cost for the Ferrari parts. If you're changing the actual cam belt tensioners, bearings and such, because of the bearing wear and such like, or potential bearing wear while you're in there, then you're into additional costs, etc. So you can throw away minimum five grand, five to seven thousand pounds every three to five years, just on the one service for a fee five five. And I just couldn't stomach that. I just couldn't stomach that. I, you know, I, I come from having a 993, where, yes, I spent a lot of money on that car to get it to the standard it was. But that was, you know, rebuilding suspension, getting the car to, on low ride, um, importing wheels, etc., etc. The the PPF, the colour correction, etc. You know, that was to get it exactly how I wanted the car to have it, to get it to that awesome, definitive 993s look. But the but. With regards to the 355, it would be just to keep it on the road, you'd be spending an extortionate cost. And just for servicing, whereas the 993 on servicing would cost me 
because of the low mileage I was doing, would cost me around 200 pounds a year to service it. I'm not kidding you, 200 pounds a year. Yes, it was with a third party, not with Porsche, but it was with a very good third party that sold that uh, that serviced my car. But if I had this, wanted the same experience with the 355, I'd still be into five to seven to eight to 10,000 pounds every three to five years for a service, including 200 to 300 to 500 pounds every year for an oil change, oil and filter change with doing the same mileage as doing in my 993. And I just couldn't stomach that. Sorry, I've ranted on a bit here, but it, it just makes a lot of difference. These costs make a lot of difference. And the 355 was getting old and I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe I should be getting a, a more modern car. And of course you've got the additional costs, etc. Whereas the, the 355 would sit about the, you know, a little bit less than, than what I could get for my 993. So um, it was about the right marketplace. And, and yeah, you could argue the fact that the, the additional amount that I was going to spend on, on perceivably another newer Ferrari, then that would, if I'd put that into savings, then that would be my my three to five year cam belt change services. That would, you know, perceivably last for another three to five years, but it would still be a 355 and I'd be throwing that money at the services. And uh, I just couldn't get my head around that. And all the owners I spoke to, they said a similar thing. You know, I, rem I remember going to a, a, one of the Ferrari cylinder clubs and speaking to um, a 355 owner who just turned up in his 355 and I, I took my 993S. And I said to the 355 owner, I said, well, how's the car been going? You know, is the car going okay, you know? And he had a frown on his face and said, no, I just got it out of the garage, it's been a nightmare, not reliable. And I thought, oh, well, that's another nail in the coffin, you know? So um, it, it's, it just hasn't helped the story. The 355 um, is, um, is a beautiful car and it's the, the definitive shape in my mind of a Ferrari. Um, it's, it's the special years and that will always be definitively the symbol of that period for Ferrari in my mind and still has the, the most classic shape of a Ferrari but it's deeply flawed in its design. Um, unfortunately Ferrari um, designed that feature <laughs> into the 355 and it'll live with it forever and that's just how it is you know for the 355 so um, pretty much I'll never own one for that very reason. And you just have to speak to people, you know, or you just have to watch videos from the car guys. Um, Damien, the, the, you know, his first supercar was a 355. He still got it, fair play to him. Um, but, you know, I think in one year, that car cost him £20,000 to service. Um, I can't stomach those sort of bills. <laughs> it's just horrific. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. But I think I've uh, put a line underneath the 355 there. Um, so, then it was a case of, okay, um, the whole thought process behind getting a Ferrari was, am I going to stick with the 993S for, for all of my life? You know, is this it? I mean, I'm getting old, you know, am I going to keep the 993 forever? I'd had it for 12 years, loved the car, um, you know, styling everything else. Obviously, it's not that great, it's not very performant, but it is a 993S and it was 22 years old um, when I sold it. But, you know, I my son was saying to me are we ever going to get a Ferrari because I'd say oh you know still thinking about getting a Ferrari and then I'd say next year next year of course next year never comes and we were talking about it and uh, you know my son um, had watched a, a video um, of uh, seen through glasses um, try and put a, we'll try and put a link to it below and uh, Sam from seen through glass he actually did a did a, a he had a, he has a series on his YouTube channel that he does um, which is called Time to Buy, and he did a Time to Buy video on the 458. In effect, he took a 458 out um, from a dealership. He borrowed it from a dealership and took it out and reviewed it. And his angle was, is it the time to buy a 458? And his conclusion was he loved the 458, but it wasn't the time to buy at the moment because they're still holding their prices and they're not dropping at all. And of course they still haven't dropped. Um, this is you know, one of the reasons why I bought 458. So <clears throat> we watched that video and um, my son watched it and then we watched it together. 
Um, and then, you know, we, we've thought about, uh, we've just decided we were going to go out to Dick Lovitz in Swindon, just, just to have a drive around and to have a look. And we were in the beginnings of the, of the coronavirus then. Um, I think we'd gone through the, the first lockdown and we'd come out of the first lockdown, but it was masks up and everything else, you know, everybody had to be masked up. Um, sounds like I'm talking about a masquerade party there. Um, something that would be held at Venice, but anyway, yeah, we're, we're masked up and, um, so we popped out to, uh, just on a whim, we popped out to Dick Lovitz in Swindon and the receptionist asked me, uh, you know, why I was there, what I wanted to do. And because we'd looked at this video, um, I said, oh, interested in a 458. It just happened to say it, you know, we'd looked at his videos and it was obviously in the back of my head. Um, and we met with um, Richard Hatton there um, for the first time and that started the relationship with myself and Richard Hatton. And, um, you know, we had a talk about 458s and about had a look around the showroom and that was the sort of beginnings of it all and we had a talk about the 458 and he happened to say that they had a 458 that was coming into the showroom they they were they were looking at buying a 458 so they were sorting out the deal with a with a with a customer and they didn't know that the deal was going to be um solidified yet but they would know in the next few days and lo and behold, I got a video from Richard, um, I think it was about three or four, maybe a week, three or four, five days, maybe a week later, of the car. They'd actually managed to procure it. And um, I went in and had a look at it and I was very clear. I said, I'm not procedural, but I'd have to sell my 993. I didn't even have it up for sale, I don't think, at the moment. And um, so we, we went and looked at this, at this 458. And, uh, this, this 458 was beautiful, it was in a, a great resale spec, resale red, black leather interior, um, had um, the comfort seats in there, so it didn't have the sports seats, but it had a good selection of carbon in there, so it was a very good real resale specification. And um, went out and we test drove it, and that was it. Test drove it, and that was it. I was smitten, you know, I had to try and get one any way I could. Um, it's just a stunning car, you know, to obviously, I'd never driven a car like that before and to come from driving a 993S to driving a 458 Spider it's just an awesome experience. The sound, the feeling of the car, I mean, you know, what can you say? Anybody who's driven a 458, especially a Spider with the roof down, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and this is why people love the 458. So that was the that was the that was the idea and that was the that was the, 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 the obsession that was, that, was, that was burnt in then, having driven the 458, um, you know, and, and the sound of it, the look of it, it's just an awesome car. So we decided, okay, well, how am I gonna achieve this? Um, so we put the, the 993 out for sale. I put it up for sale for a couple of weeks and it, it uh, only got tire kickers. You know, nobody actually came to have a look at it, but anybody who, who um, was interested in the car, they were just interested in getting it for nothing in effect or for getting it for about half of the value that I had it up for sale. And I put it on some of the forums, but people were just saying, oh, your car's not worth that amount. It's only worth this amount. They obviously weren't taken into account. It was a low mileage example. It, was, it, had, won, it had won concours events. Um, it was a very special version of the car and it was immaculate, totally rebuilt suspension, specialist wheels, fully detailed, fully PPF wrapped. Um, I mean, it, if you want to know more about that car, then check the 993S playlist below um, and the, you'll see a full history of the videos that I did on the 993. So we decided to do this 993 playlist. We decided to start creating some content on the 993 uh, to start moving the channel forward because we decided that the channel was pretty much going to be supercars and horology. And, and maybe some vloggings and maybe some fitness bits and pieces in there, but pretty much it's, it's consolidated down to horology and supercars now. And somebody, uh, somebody got in touch. I advertised my detailer, Ted Whitehall. So, so, so I advertised my detailer on one of the videos on the on um, the color correction and detailing of the 903S, and. One of the um, guys got in touch, well, my, sorry, my detailer got in touch with me um, and he said somebody's got in touch with him because I advertised him in that video about um, potentially, it was, saw my car, interested in my car and Ted said to him, well, have you checked with Richard to see if he's interested in selling it? Ted didn't know I actually had it up for sale. And so Ted got in touch with me and told me this and uh, I said to Ted, well, yeah, um, funny enough, I, I am looking at um, selling the car. Um, I'd had it up on Auto Trader for two weeks. As, set, as I said, I had tyre kickers. So what I decided to do was take it off Auto Trader. Um, 
knock back the actual decision to sell the car in 2020 and, the, and the, the option of buying a 458 in 2020 because of course we had the coronavirus it was all getting very sketchy um, and to push it into 2021 to try and sell the car again in 2021. So Ted called me we had a discussion um, and the, the person who bought the car got in touch and so he came down to, to see the car the following day or a couple of days later I think and then we made it he made a decision to buy it and uh, he bought the car and uh, he was actually like i say he was a subscriber on the channel so um we uh yeah and we then we keep in touch and, and he's he's a, the best person possible that i could possibly sell the car to because i was as you know very fastidious about that car wanted to go to a good owner a beautiful car and i still miss the car now as you can imagine i had that car for 12 years um, stunning example of a 993s and if i ever got the chance to buy a 993s again in the future um you know i'd never be able to buy one like that again because that that car was just awesome in every way pretty much immaculate fantastic example but you know sometimes you have to let things go and i had to decide that if i was going to buy the 458 i'd have to sell the 993s and i had to get a certain certain um, value for it which um the car was easily worth um, but obviously you've got to sell a car to the right person etc etc you know the car's only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it at the end of the day but i wouldn't have sold it for any less than i did sell it for i just wouldn't have sold it i would have kept it and uh, changed the decisions on buying a 458. So the car was, the, the 993S was sold um, and um, unfortunately the other car that I'd already seen at Dick Lovett's, the, the, the 458 we test driven, that had been sold in the meantime because I went to actually test drive that in June of 2020. Um, then I had to sell my car, etc, etc. And we had all this time with me advertising for a couple of weeks. Um, so my car wasn't actually sold. My car left here in September, I think it was September the 18th, my car actually left and went to its new owner my 993s in the meantime the other 458 had sold as you'd expect you know 458 to walk out the door quite quickly very rare for them to come into the dealerships because in general owners want to keep hold of them or um or they sell them on to a private dealer but uh, in general owners keep hold of 458s so it was a case of okay um i was keeping in touch with um with with dick lovitz um and i really wanted to get the car from them i built up a very good relationship with richard hatton there at um at dick lovitz in swindon and you know was popping in there having a chat with them um i guess i was annoying them but um and we were checking out cars but they were great you know we built up a really good relationship and i love their coffee as well i like a nice coffee and they've got fantastic coffee there I and mean, what's better you know you go go going to a dealership to look around at all their ferraris and all their supercars you know um it's it's it's, it's not a bad thing to to do is it <laughs> it's uh, it's great fun and it's really interesting um and of course it keep, keeps your interest going as well and it works both ways you know on both sides so then we had uh another car that came up that i looked at getting and this was a car at a dealership in in ireland and they had a 458 there and it was a very good spec and so i started liaising with the dealer at in in, in ireland and i was two days away from actually going and look at that, this car in ireland um, which is which is great spec um, it had more mileage than i really wanted it to and it didn't have lift which was I know you don't necessarily need lift on a 458 Spider because they are quite high up anyways. You can, as you can see from mine, yes, this is the rear, but and it's I know the lift only works on the front and not the rear. In case anybody starts saying that in the comments, um, but I wanted it there for peace of mind, just in case. I mean, you can't see the lead into our driveway, but it is actually quite steep, and. I'll buy, yeah, probably wouldn't scrape if I came in at an angle, but if I came in at the front, you know, it just might scrape. Um, so we've got to be careful about things like that. So I was, you know, I'm in an iron about that. I really wanted lift on the car, <clears throat> but you can't have everything, you know, you can't, uh, the, the perfect spec isn't necessarily come along, gonna come along. And I was thinking, well, if I wait forever, then I'm never going to get the car that I want, you know? And I was mindful that I'd sold the 993. I wanted to get something back that was going to retain its value and possibly accrue in value because I'm very asset driven in, in, in my approach to life. You know, we were looking at this, this, this car in Ireland and I was two days away from going over and then finalizing, potentially finalizing a deal on getting the car shipped over to the UK. And then I had a call from my dealership. Now my dealership, um, Dick Lovitz, knew that I was looking at this car in Ireland. And I got a call from them to say, is it too late? They just had an owner come in who had a car collection 
uh, who has a car collection and he had a 458 Spider. he just brought it in for servicing and he'd let them know that he wanted to upgrade to an F8 for the 458 only they had to get rid of the 458 pretty quickly um, and they, so he needed you know sell on the 458 and he'd quickly taken some photographs and got these photographs across to me and I was literally two days away from going to see this car in Ireland and I had then had this message for him and I quickly called up Richard had a discussion with him and there was no definite um, confirmation that they were actually going to get this 458 in but it was a very good possibility so I thought oh god what the hell do I do I'm going over to see this car in Ireland um, do I can it do I you know and I think you know I'm a very ethical person but I got in touch and I said look the situation is this is other cars come up I've been dealing with this with this dealership for six months um, there's a potential of this other car this other this other car is local um, and it's a very good spec and I'll be kicking myself if I don't go and see this car so I want to go and see this car um, and then I'll let you know you know how it goes well so I so I delayed the flight and, and that's one of the other bizarre things I had my flight booked for Ireland but I managed to refund the flight for everything by about 40 pounds and the timeline for refunding it the deadline to get my money back for the flight I managed to do it within about 40 seconds on their system when I called them up it's within about 40 seconds of him logging into my system and being able to refund me their money before I'd, I'd uh, before the deadline had hit and I hadn't been able to to get the the funds back so it's quite bizarre how things work out so we've got a situation there where potentially this 458 is going to come into Swindon potentially it's not and if it does come in I'm going to go and have a look at it and then there's cost prices sorting out the, the, the you know a deal etc etc now that car did come in that car is this car <laughs> so I'll give you the answer there so that car came in it was a fantastic spec um, it was just the perfect specification I mean it's got carbon everywhere and as you can see the specification um, the rear diffuser isn't carbon that's about the only thing that isn't carbon um, it's got carbon all inside we'll, we'll give you a rundown of the interior we'll do a video of the interior when we when we when the weather picks up and we get the car out onto the driveway but needless to say it's a fantastic specification it's even got even got seal kick plates in carbon which is a which is very rare to be up on the cars one of the other things that's really rare that i'll show you you know again when we do the video on the inside is that the whole center console is in carbon it's not it's not side capped in leather the whole center console is carbon apparently that was a very rare option that was chosen so i went to look at this 458 spider at dick lovett fell in love with it and managed to sort out a deal the car never hit the showroom um, could because of the me having that relationship with the dealer and me going in very quickly and and sorting out the car and cutting the deal with the dealer and uh, the rest is history you know we bought the car you you know if you haven't seen the collection video then then check the the supercar playlist below you'll see all the all the videos are going to be there on the 458 that, that we've already created and that we will be creating going forward which will be a lot of content on the 458 and um, and that was pretty much it um, we decided we were going to buy the 458 and um, and that was the car we I decided on and I made a deal with Dick Lovitz um, even the weather was fantastic you know it's been bad weather but the day I collected the 458 we had we had you know great weather on that day so we, we took it out for a drive and uh, and then brought it back um, later in the evening I think we took it out for about 40 miles which was absolutely awesome you know the car performed fantastically well so uh, so yeah that was that was cool so that's the story of how I came about deciding on a 458 and a 458 spider and how I came to actually buy this this immaculate low mileage 458 spider so this is a late 2015 458 spider and it's only got 5100 miles in it fantastic car for all my viewers thanks a lot for watching guys um, some great future content to come we're growing the channel this year we want to get it up to a minimum of a thousand subscribers so please if you're not subscribed which a lot of you aren't you a lot of my viewers aren't subscribed so if you if you like the content please click like and please think about subscribing if you're not subscribed already it really is important for the youtube algorithm and to help us to really move forward with growing the channel thanks a lot for watching guys take care you guys and we'll see you in the next video